Hello uh, everybody, Sandy Q&A again. Uh, I'd like to open up by saying thank you very much for all the kind birthday wishes. Didn't really mean to plug it out there, but the fact that it just hit 3,000 subscribers two days before it seemed fitting. So thanks very much, guys. And uh, But it's not all about me. Uh, you know, <laughs> but yeah, uh, on the subject, it's not all about me. Um, a couple of shout outs for Van on the Run and Yorkshireman's Daily Grind, who have both got their own channels out there doing the small career thing, you know, one on putting clutches in tractors, but it's all kind of interesting stuff. So if you get a chance to check out either Van on the Run or a Yorkshireman's Daily Grinds um, vlog things, please do. Uh, so what did we do this week? Uh, we did Van versus Lorry. Uh, Steve Campbell says, actually, because I said about the fact that one of the big pains is you don't have to take driving brakes. He said, actually, if you're driving a van for more than four hours daily, you do need to take driving brakes. Um, Everybody in their right mind should take driving brakes. I know some of these new cars now have a little cup of coffee come on. You've been driving a four hours, a little cup of coffee comes on a little cup, comes on the driveway, like, you know, um, on the dashboard. And, um, yeah, the problem is it's not regulated. In the trucks, you have got the digi card, which goes in the machine. If you're over four and a half hours, they don't have you. Um, in a van, they can't have you. Having said that, if you have a dangerous accident and you hurt someone or you kill someone and it turns out that they can prove that, hold on a second, you filled up at a petrol station six hours ago and that petrol station six hours, you haven't had a break in the six hours, they will do you. You're dead right. It comes down to common sense whatsoever. What is a real pain is being told when you can take the breaks. Because sometimes you think, okay, well, I've got to stop for three quarters. I've had times, you know, the amount of times very recently where I've had to stop 10 minutes away from my house for three quarters of an hour because I've run out of driving time. And you think, that's kind of daft. But I understand the rules there and I understand they have to protect everybody, but yeah, no, you're dead right. Everybody should take regular breaks. Everybody should be safe. Um, it's just a real pain being sort of like a big brother type of thing. I understand why it's there, I get it. It's just sometimes it's a bit like, you know. Um, a van on the run, who has got his own vlog, please check him out. Um, he's thinking of getting into an 18 tonne. He said, what could you make tramping Monday to Friday? Right, guys, you know, a couple of you asking me how much can you make in lorries and all this kind of stuff. You've got to bear in mind I'm still relatively new to this. I've only been doing it for about uh, two, about two months maybe. Uh, I would say on average in a truck, you want to have 500 pound a day. In an 18 tonne, you want to do two jobs. You want to do one in the morning for 250 quid. You want to do one in the afternoon for 250 quid. If you're tramping, you could possibly fit one in between. So you could do 250, 250, picking up 250, getting halfway there, dropping off in the morning 250. So you could make as much as a grand a day. Sounds fantastic, doesn't it? It's not quite as straightforward as all that. They don't always gel together. Um, yes, you do make a lot more money on a job, but you, I mean, the amount, I mean, I had one in a co op in, on Friday morning um, in Bristol. Um, got there at half past eight, got out at half past 10. That's not unusual. You know, I got, I got there early to see if I could get it off early. It took me half an hour before they even got me onto a bay. Then I was sitting on a bay for nearly an hour, then a bit of time to get me paperwork and get out on that kind of stuff. It literally, I was on there for two hours. Then I was in Bristol, sat in Bristol for another hour, hour and a half looking for another job, didn't happen. It's not quite as straightforward as that, but the potential is there. If you get it right, if you can get your own customers, if you can get it lined up, the potential is there. Like I say, but please don't take my word for it because I'm very new to this and I'm sure there's a load of pitfalls which I haven't discovered yet. But as I do, of course, I will let you guys know. Uh, right, what else we got? Lewis a ASP6 says, here come the dreamers. My, my point entirely. <laughs> Sounds fantastic on paper, in practice, not quite so straightforward. But I've done one on van versus lorry, so check that one out. That's where I'm at at the moment. Let's see, you know, see how you work out there. Uh, yeah, uh, Yorkshireman Daily Grind said, he said, I had to laugh, the things you need. Uh, he said, that's why I'm now in a van, not in a lorry. Again, Yorkshireman's Daily Grind. That's his own vlog, please check him out. Um, it's not for everybody. I'm, I'm, I'm 50, and by rights I should be winding down. But I'm not, I've got this, I've got a BM upon it, I've got a project, and I want to try and go ahead with it. How it'll wind up in the end, I really don't know, guys. You know, we were running small vans for a little while, we're kind of winding that one down because ultimately you discover for the amount of work that's involved and you really don't make a lot of money out of it. So, but we'll come to that another day. But um, yeah, I'm still not quite sure the way forward. DIY Men said, would I make money in a lorry, more money in a lorry than a van? I suppose the best way to describe it is this. Would I make more money if I opened a Tesco superstore rather than the corner shop? Yes, you would, but it's not that straightforward.
There we go. Uh, right, what we got? What happens if you collect the wrong load? Uh, Mark Lachlan said, this happened to me. He said, picking up one pallet, and the guy said, it's two pallets. So we run the shipper, and it turned out it was two. I know he said it was two vans ordered. Again, always speak to the shipper, because it might be, I can fit them in the van, and then you go away, and then they go, oh, we don't need a second van, cancel it. And then the shipper loses half his, half his job. And then he's, ring, he's ringing you going, why did you say you could take two? We had two vans going in there, now we've got one. You've cost me off the money, so always speak to the shipper. Good advice. Um, Yorkshire's Daily Grind had a job on Monday. He was told to pick up 17 items. Turned out there was only nine. When he questioned it, he said, yeah, just nine. Got there, supposed to be ten. <laughs> but he turned out his own customer, so it all wound up okay. And Steve SDC said, it's always the driver's fault. It's, yeah, it's kind of like, first of all, leadership, everything is your fault, but it's not. If you do everything right, if you get there, if it says two pallets and there's only one pallet to be collected, so you give them all the details, you ring the shipper, you say, right, I've quoted the reference number, is there another reference number? Say to the guy, this is the only thing that's definitely going there, and you get halfway there and they go, we found another one, you can go, I told you this, I was there, I quoted the reference number, I queried you, I queried him, it's not me that got this one wrong, guys, and they're going to have to put their hands up, so... There we go. Um, oh yeah, right, you know, I've done it before, I know I have. My link with the CX. And actually, this is quite interesting. I mean, a few of you have actually come up with things that I um, never really thought of, you know, sort of a... Have you been quite kind? Which is very nice, thank you very much. You know, sort of, our pedatilla Sispy says, he joined cause of me. He says, I hope you are getting a few beers from YouTube. Thank you very much. It's very kind of you. Like I say, I think I'll be on, I'll be blunt with you. At the moment, it kicks in between one hundred and eighty and two hundred dollars a month, which in real terms turns out to be about one hundred and fifty quid. One hundred and fifty quid a month. It's not bad. That's eighty. That's eighteen hundred pounds, nearly two grand a year. The amount of time it takes me to make these videos probably about three hours a week. So maybe a bit more by the time you sit there and you do the editing on the computer and stuff like that. That's the God's honest truth, like I say. And I did, I mean, I've had a few 50 quids from um, BCD. Nothing from anybody else. That's it. But you're like I say, I ain't getting rich out of it. You know, I don't know how many subscribers you have to have if you want to buy yourself a gold yacht. But as I said, I don't just do it for the money. I do it because it helps people. And I do it because it's kind of become a hobby. So there you go. Um, but thanks very much. Paul Davies believes me. He says his videos have helped him. Good. I'm pleased that's kind of the idea, like, you know. Ian McBride says, thanks for the bids. Uh, start printing T-shirts and mugs. Yeah, you know. Pete the Courier Driver T-shirt. I think I'll stick with the Cornish Blue for now, to be honest with you. Mmm. My oh, favourite mug, that. It's like the Wallace and Gromit one. Don't know why that was. Um, van on a run. Uh, always thought you were genuine. I'm normally right about people. Well, I am. Thank you. Uh, Mr. Mr. What if you did get paid? You're still helping people. Hope the seven half ton is keeping you busy. It is keeping me busy. I've done two weeks now without infringements. I'm getting the hang of the driver's card thing, which is the biggest thing. I'm now waiting on, um, I'm waiting on, uh, I'm waiting on my practical test for my class two then I think I'm going to be chopping in Alice for one. <laughs> I don't know whether to go 18 tonne or 26. There's not a lot of jobs for 26 tonnes out there, but there are quite a few jobs for moving 16 pallets. So it's the length, really. Um, and I kind of like the fact you it's got a wheel that goes up and down. And also I want a bed that's always there. So I, I mean, don't get me wrong, I love Alice and I love the day bed thing, but... Um, jumping in and out can sometimes, you know, it could be a bit of a plaver. It'd be nice if it was just there. Have all your bags and stuff on it. Just, just have a little lay down. Lovely. So we'll see where that one goes. I'm also looking at, I'm, I'm between Das and Scania's. So I've always worked with Scania, but they're, they're another league, aren't they? A lot more money. Guys out there, anyone who knows about trucks? I, th I think I'm going to end up with the CF. We've got a CF. I like the CF. It's cool. Um, da -da -da. And this one, I love this one, in fairness. It did make me smile. I even read this one of the wife, like, Paul Williams. Oh, come along. I love the way he starts. He says, why do people obsess with what I'm in for? He says, this is his words, not mine, and I'm very grateful. Thanks, mate. It's an extremely useful forum for a business where so many others do nothing. We sit alone, ignoring vans, ignoring the fact that we can help each other and make our lives easier. Um... He does it with style, compassion, and honesty. And if he gets a drink out of it, it's money well earned. It's not a conspiracy. Mate, thank you very much indeed. Thanks to all of you who commented kindly on the channel. And like I say, at the end of the day, you can believe what you like. I really don't mind. Oh, someone at the door. 
delivery drivers. Working all hours, working weekends, working in the rain. You gotta love them. Keep the, they keep the, keep the world spinning, delivery drivers. Them and nurses. <sighs> right, okay. Where are we up to? Miscellaneous. Um, van on the run. Again. Uh, Amazon, <laughs> don't forget, it's got his own vlog. Please check it out. Um, Amazon in cars. Yeah, because we did a thing, one guy turned around and he said, um, is there a career network for cars? And I said, I think Amazon does it, because I've, ro I've rocked up there before, and there's, there's like loads of them parked out, and they're all do doing the steel thing. Um, he said, it's, it's, it's called Amazon Flex. Uh, you only need normal insurance on it, because the Amazon people cover you on their insurance. Um, it's not a full-time gig. It's a maximum of 24 hours a week. But he said, I do it sometimes. He says, when the van thing gets quiet, because he's gone into the small van from the lorry, um, as some people do. And he says, you know, it's actually not bad. You know, there was a big thing on Amazon, and they turned around and they said, Amazon workers are not happy, and they have to walk a million miles if they want to eat the food and all that kind of stuff. Well, I've got to say, from my personal experience, they seem pretty happy when I get there. Normally when I roll in, the guy on the gate seems reasonable, they're very jolly a lot of the time, and then you back up and it's a new shiny warehouse, and you go and you give the keys to the lady, and they're quite happy. In comparison to a lot of distribution networks that I've been in, I've found they all seem all right. I mean, don't get me wrong, I don't know, if the, I don't know the truth, I've, I don't have nothing to do with it, but, you know, I used to fear Amazon. They've got, they've got their own app, which if you're going to deliver one, it's, and the app is brilliant. It is... As good as, if not better, than the CX app. I'll tell you what it's got, one if you were listening out to CX, there's a really good one on the Amazon app, whereas rather than, you know, when you get on site, you have to click it, with the Amazon app, it's got you geolocated. So the second you actually arrive, having said that, Amazon is huge, and it might go, you're on site, and you're looking for a shop, and you haven't actually found it. It's, it says I'm on site. It took me 20 minutes after that to get there, so maybe that would have worked so well with ours, but very good. So anyway, uh, yeah, so there's one thing you can do. Amazon Flex, if you're in a car and you want to do a bit of delivery driving on the side, could be the way forward. Uh, also, he's also researched into being an owner-driver of a 40-foot. Um, he said there's money to be made in containers. He said if you find an operating centre, hang on, do you still have to go through the local advert thing? Yeah, so if you want to get an operator's licence but you found someone that's operating trucks, do you still have to pay to put the advert in the operator? Unfortunately, yes. To get your operator's license, you have to advertise it. I know this because the place where I'm parking my truck is an operation centre. They have lorries, they've got, well, the driver transport lorries are up there, uh, my mate Giuseppe's lorries are up there, he's got class ones up there. Um, there's other people down at the bottom of class ones, I still have to, you've still got to go for the whole palaver, mate. Sorry, but that's kind of the way it is. One step in front of the other, journey of a million miles, you know. Uh, what else we got here? Uh, Yorkshireman's Daily Grind. Something on um, compacts on the subscribers. Do a link. Oh, congratulations on the subscribers. Do a link. Written that down. Don't even remember what it means. Thanks anyway. Uh, Salam Aswad, in your opinion, what are the top three operation locations in England? I don't know. I haven't been doing this more than two months. You know? If this was strictly, they wouldn't be calling me in as the sort of the Anton de Beck, what's his name? I don't watch strictly, sort of Darcy Bustle, Wayne Sleep type, showing you how to do the spins and all that, because I've been doing it for two weeks. Um, I think there's a lot of work. I, I, th I basically think the M1 corridor is pretty good. I guess you're looking at um, Milton Keynes, Northampton, going up to kind of like you know your Derby, Sheffield, those kind. Anything up the M1 corridor seems to be good. Around the 25 seems to be okay. I think if you stick in that main block, but that's based on what vans do. It's not really based on what lorries do. I always think if you go into the sort of the appendages, if you go into Norfolk, if you go in past Bristol or even Bristol, I always struggle with the M4 corridor. Go in the middle of Wales, I've always said you struggle to get one back. And going past Northumbria into Scotland, unless you go in Aberdeen. But it could be another world. I could jump into 26 and go, do you know what? The amount of work that's coming out of the South Coast because it's all coming out of the docks, as soon as I know, I will let you know. That's all I can say, like, you know. So, um... Gerham Jort um, is struggling to find public showers. Oh, yeah, this is a call out to everybody else. He's tramping, struggling to find public showers. Um, things that cross my mind 
uh, join a gym, although that was before the soppy lockdown thing where you have to book in because if you join a gym, the only problem is you can't exactly roll up to sort of like your, your local gym parking spaces in an arts it, can you? But if you can find gyms close to where that is, you can always go in and use their showers. Or failing that, um, leisure centres. Most towns have got some kind of leisure centre. Again, they don't tend to have truck parking nearby, but um, I'm sure there are truck stops and stuff like that. Some of those have showers, but this is a big shout-out to you guys that know better than me if we could help um, old Gerheim with, with his conclusion. There might be an app that shows you where local showers are. You know, just so you might get, get yourself a wash. Or the other, the other one is just try and get yourself a cheap B&B every... You know, you might not have to do it. You can have a strip wash, but maybe every other night it might be nice to find a bed to sleep in with a bath. But, again, I haven't really done it, so... Uh, but... Anybody can help the guy, please give us a shout in the comments. I will, of course, boss it on. Lee Allen um, hates multi drop, especially in the seven and a half ton, all that handball. Handball in a seven and a half ton is not fun. <laughs> I did one on Friday afternoon and it was a construction site, and I, I mean, admittedly, I didn't have to do it. I could have just waited. But it was like some racking. Then we had to drive around the corner. There was some more racking. And this racking was across mud. And it was down here. And then turn left. And then down a bit. And then in there. And it was boards and racking. And there were two labourers doing it. And I'll be honest with you guys. I struggled for two reasons. Firstly, I struggle to watch other people work when I think... And I'll, well, three reasons. I don't like watching other people work when I can help them. The foreman did. An argument can be made. That's his job. Another argument can be made. Just standing there doing nothing. You could help us carry these boards. But... I don't imagine many foremen do that, to be honest with you. Uh, secondly, if I get done quicker, I can get my day done quicker. I maybe squeeze another job in. Um, and thirdly, what's thirdly? Um, yeah, I can't remember thirdly. I'm sure it was probably the most important part out of all of them. What was it? <laughs> one, it's one, 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 it's safe and secure. Two, it's flexible. Four, where is three? Three, oh, there it is. Got off the tangent again. Uh, on running costs, uh, in an eight, 12 to 18 ton, right, okay, again, like I say, I'm still getting to the bottom of this. I reckon when I was riding my loot and it was probably about 35p a mile, which is diesel, wear and tear, spares, that kind of stuff. I think in a, in a 12 to 18 ton, you're looking at around about a pound a mile. Like I say, you, 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 these figures I'm throwing at you, you can make, you can take 500 quid a day, yeah, but you still got to take off your operator's license, your running costs, your transport manager, your, your fact you're only going to do two jobs rather than three. You know, it's kind of, it sounds wonderful. I'm not trying to not sell you it, but I'm also not trying to get you to all jump in and go, what have you done to me? You know, just, it's a project. But yeah, I reckon the running costs on, any, on about like an 18 times about a pound a mile. And you should be quoting around about three pound a mile. So, because that's what you're going to have to do to make money. And also, the, these things, you know, sort of, you, you should be rewarded for the work you put in, you know. Um, oh, Road Lords gave me some feedback. I'm still using the Road Lords thing, the app. It's pretty, it's good. It's very good. It's sort of, um, and it's free. It's the only app out there, you know, like a uh, free sat nav app on the phone that I know. And you can put your, you can put your, it, it tells you weight restrictions and you can put all your things in. It's, it's going okay, you know, sort of a um, few things that you, it could improve it. Stop giving me points for some reason. And I don't know why, that's very childish, isn't it? In the fact that you, every time you do like um, 100, 100 kilometres, 60 odd miles, you've got 100 points. And it tells you how great you are. And I was clocking my way up the ranks and I was just trying to, I just stopped giving me them. And I thought, I don't want to play now. <laughs> Which is very huge, stupid and childish, but kind of did. <laughs> so there we go. Um, Steve Campbell. You, oh, right, this was another one. Some guy turned around and said, do you need to have an O licence if I want to rent a truck? Can I just rent it from like a truck hire place and then just go to work in it? Steve Campbell cleared this one up for me. Hey Steve, hope you're all, hope you're well, mate. Um, you need an O license to rent a truck unless it's for private use. Um, so if you want to, if you basically want to rent a truck to move your house, as my cousin did once, you can rent it from the hire place around the corner, bring it up, fill it up. As long as you've got the, the CPC thing, you know, you've got the relevant qualifications, drive it around the corner, unload your stuff, and go back again. It, presumably, if I was on the market and my lorry broke down, I could rent a truck. So I had my trucks on the road for a week. I could rent a truck to, to use it to carry my stuff to market and back again. But if you want to use it to rent a truck and then go and pick up someone else's planets and move it, you need your own license for that, apparently. And he used his Hackney license. Now, is that a difference between a Hackney license and a no? I thought a Hackney license was kind of like a London thing. But apparently, if you've got a private hire cab 
you can't pick up off the road. I know that. You can pick up a rink or you can pick up the telephone. So I'm going to ring you and they book you. If you got, so I think what he's saying is if I've got a hackney licence, I can pick up on the street. So someone waves him, he can't pick it up. I kind of thought that only happened in London, but obviously not true. So once again, those who know better than me, Steve, I'm sure you'll put me straight, mate. Be interested to know what the crack is with that one. Um, J2 Inc. says he's uh, looking to start couriering. Um, He's losing his job in aviation. Yeah, a lot of a lot of people are doing that. I found out I was doing the CPC. A lot of people, obviously, because the aeroplanes are on the floor now, uh, are jumping into lorries or jumping into vans because it's not too dissimilar to what they did before, moving freight from A to B, you know. Um, he's getting mad insurance quotes. I use BC, we use Business Choice Direct. I get a kickback by telling you this, but that's neither here nor there, because all our three trucks are insured by Business Choice Direct. There is a link to how to get hold of them. Mention my name. Um, it might help you, although they sometimes give you a discount. You know, what? even if, say, Pete says, you know, the, the money that's supposed to give him, give it to me, and I'm fine with that. I don't really mind, like, you know, if it gets you started, fair play to you, you know. Yeah, but try everybody. And if anyone knows anybody out better, you know, maybe, maybe you're in the same situation. You've come out of an airplane, you've uh, just got, you know, a career, and you've, you've got a firm that's good for you. If you could please let me know, I'd gladly pass it on to your man. So there we go. Uh, DIY men said, would I make money if I was a seven and a half tonne rather than a van? We've had that one already. Um, might have written that one down twice, actually. Um, Tony M. Can you do one on co-loading? There's one already. I'll do you a link. And uh, what if you quote the shipper 100 miles and it turns out to be 120? Mate, for that one, you get your own video. So there we go. Uh, uh, finally. Have we done that one? Yes. Oh, there's one I didn't write down as well, wasn't there? Sort of, uh, I will come back to that. Mate. There was one, I think it was... Um... Oh, it's there it is. Steve Campbell. He, my mate, he turned around and he said, I collected the wrong, well, the, long, the wrong load once and accidentally ended up in prison. I had a friend of mine who didn't collect the wrong load, but he was um, the security on a load. He got 13 years, went down to 11. One of the nicest guys I've ever met. My mate Dave. You can read him all about it in the book, which is, if you go to the end screen, you go to my web, website, there's a bit on the website. And finally, Jason Burke, my hero, turned around and said, what's with all the t-shirts? He says, um, you're, um, you've got more, t you've got a load of t-shirts. Mate, for that one, there's a video. I've been waiting for someone to ask me that. Not only is there a video, there's gonna be a quiz. I was gonna kind of save it till Christmas, but hey, give you some time to research. In the meantime, hope you're all well. Hope you're enjoying your weekend and I hope you're taking care and taking money.